Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Jill Harrington. I'm here with my son, Alex Lamore, who was the inspiration for me to write the book Superhero Grief. Uh, Superhero Grief is something I use to teach my son. We learned lessons in loss. Um, he's a brief child that has endured the losses of his dad, his grandparents, um, our beloved German Shepherd, our, beloved, um, uh, nanny, nanny. Uh, our, our babysitter, our nanny, all before the age of 17. And Alex is a person with autism. And this uh, conference we were here uh, to talk about with HFA, a really wonderful new resource they've created called Autism and Grief. And it is to help adults with autism um, and professionals as well as uh, family members kind of understand a little bit about persons with autism and grief. Alex, what was, what was that like for you to be on the panel yesterday? It was a great honor, to be honest. Uh, I'm so glad to have been part of that project. It was satisfying to be able to slowly start to spread the awareness of this resource that we've spent so long working on. And I don't know, it's just, it's all I can say, it was very amazing to be a part of this project. So we talked a little bit yesterday about persons with autism who are grieving. Again, one of the biggest takeaways is when you've met one person with like anybody who's grieving, when you've met one person with autism, you've, you've met, met one, one person, person with yeah. autism. But can you talk about some of the general characteristics that we that persons with autism may have? Yeah, some of the uh, general characteristics that a person with autism might have are uh, tits. They may have obsessive behaviors they do, like flapping their ear or grabbing their shirt. Uh, they may seem a little more blunt or rude than normal to others. Uh, and they may seem more anxious in social situations. They also will have trouble expressing emotions or identifying what emotion they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And how do you think this affects them in their grieving process? Like I think that it sort of disenfranchises their grief because people, most people might think that they're just upset or they're not feeling anything when in reality they are feeling it, but it's internalized because they don't know how to react to it. They don't know how to express how they're feeling. They sometimes themselves don't exactly know what they're feeling. Okay. And sometimes they express it in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Or like yesterday we watched the film and the young gentleman he is uh, very logical and he doesn't feel the need to go to funerals or to go to memorials. So um, we talked a little bit about ways to enfranchise, uh, tips to enfranchise people uh, with autism, their grief experience. And one of them was uh, provide the opportunity to go to funerals and memorials, but don't mm -hmm. necessarily force um, people to, give them opportunities to learn and understand what they're about. Also trying to adapt i know for you with a lot of different services we've gone to in terms of wakes and funerals um, you have some sensory issues so um, i helped you to pick out clothing that um, you felt was respectful but also comfortable, um, comfortable. Um, we enlisted the help of family members because um, for you you get overwhelmed in large mm -hmm. crowds mm -hmm. as well as your focus sometimes it's hard to focus for long periods of time so yeah. His cousins took him on walks or he had a place to go to um, outside of the funeral home um, during during the funerals. Um, also, some ways to enfranchise those who are grieving who may be on the autism spectrum was to help, you know, offer the opportunity for rituals, mm -hmm. help understand that um, a person's expression of emotions, that we all have different ranges of expressions of emotions, right? Mm -hmm. um, and for some, it emotional expression doesn't necessarily mean they're not grieving on the inside. Exactly. Or everyone, their, their world everyone, has changed. everyone experiences grief uniquely. Yep. And that things like structure are highly important, especially to you. I know that through some of the losses that you've had in your life, being your mom, making sure I knew the next day, some people might take the day off um, or choose to keep their children home. But for you, it was really important to go to school the next day mm -hmm. to kind of have that routine and that structure and support system, as well as advocating with special educators and teachers and people in your life that, um, you know, death is permanent and so is our love for people when they die so our grief is kind of permanent it's it may not be the same as um it was when some we learned somebody we loved first died as the years go on um grief may change but it's always with us and so making sure that 
people in your life knew that um, you had many losses that you were carrying in your life and that you needed a safe place to be able to be understood and validated and accepted. Yes, and even though they may they may not be gone, I can't speak to them on the phone anymore, their love still exists here and their essence still exists in my memories. So as long as I remember who they are, I never forget who they are, they are still there. And we also talked about one last thing is that it's really important to provide support services for folks that are inclusive of everybody's different grieving styles. And, um, you know, things that helped you were going to um, bereavement camp with other children, um, as well as going to uh, specific grief counseling where mm -hmm. the uh, therapist, the counselor also was uh, uh, autism informed. Mm -hmm. So that was really helpful for you through the years. And also, I think you want to say something about support people in your life. I do. I've had my mother my whole life and I don't, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for her. But I also made some new friends online over the last couple of years. One of them is a young man who's in a, a teacher's aid for young autistic children in the UK. And the other one is uh, a good friend of mine who I talked with every day. She's in Norway. Yeah. And so I talk to them almost every day. Well, sometimes I will go to them for advice. Sometimes I'll just go there to talk about my problems or just to talk with them, just to sort of talk the day away. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to not only for you to have resources, but to feel a sense of community with others. Because mm -hmm. we know that joy that is shared is doubled and grief that is shared is halved. So thank you to Open to Hope for having us here today. Thank you, my, thank you Open to Hope. I appreciate the interview. You, you always give us a lot of hope. Yes, they do.